John Lilly once put it this way, there are no limits at all to the human mind whatsoever, except those we impose on ourselves because of our beliefs. And those limits are also beliefs to be transcended. And that's a view that suggests that the possibilities of human transformation are virtually infinite. That we have no way of knowing the outer horizon of what it means to be human. And really, to understand all this, everything, you have to go very, very deep in, into uh, a study of uh, history, consciousness, neurophysiology, everything. You have, to be, you have to be the supreme eclectic type of uh, leaning, and you really have to be wanting to know who you are and, and what everything is about. The thing that you'll find when you go to sacred sites, if you're very humble about it, is that you are on a personal journey and the sacred site will respond to you in a way that is appropriate only to you. The information is always what you are searching for. And it's the intent you give uh, that energy that defines whether it is used for right action or not. And it is inside these sacred spaces that you will be reminded that you are a god, that you are a bright star. So what you're trying to do is move through the course without ricocheting off walls or creating karma. You're trying to slide through things smoothly. How do you do that? It's called flowing. There is a technique that you can do that will allow you to touch some part of your inner being that has more knowledge than your conscious state does. Hey guys, welcome once more, you crazy mega soul diamond incarnates going through it like we all are at the moment and holding your power and managing to find me, Andre Hodge, Infinite Potential Healing, Servant of Truth and Crocodile, Star Lord, Wolverine, Aladdin Dundee. If you um, are new to me, I, I own my power and structure my water and... Um, just accept who I am as an incarnate here on earth and stuff and doing galactic special forces work and um, being an example that it's okay to accept yourself so um, and in, in actual fact this whole series the incarnation war which has come about after a long time with me um, after a lot of in the field experience and doing a lot of work and creation of content and stuff like that and uh, this concept not really um, it's not really even considered or calculated into the pattern recognition of sort of people and stuff of it even being possible so um, my purpose here into offering this is because I'm actually I feel very rare in actually ex say accepting this because I've got the galactic special forces field experience and I'm just using those labels all right to um, associate it with certain things so the field work and um, the missions and stuff like that I associate with that because um, if you've watched the previous four and particularly the last one um, to me all right the whole thing of being here on earth is to be that here now as the the wild card to resolve everything because everything's in a bit of a stalemate and that's where um you also if you are here 
even being willing to consider this sort of stuff are uh, that in itself. To me, um, yeah, it's an enormous achievement on the soul level to um, pursue awareness in this unawareness realm where everything is done to um, limit that. But, uh, you know, like, if awareness, I, I see awareness as the um, default sort of mode in the universe, right? So coming here to in a realm where there is an absence of awareness, you can feel disconnected and all that sort of shit, and, yeah, it feels bad and that, but um, I, I flip it. I'm like, what if that's exactly the feeling that I had to go through all this shit and all this creation had to happen and all this quagmire and all that just to have an experience of unawareness, all right? How rare that is, all right? What if you flip that and see that that is like, ha, oh, that's what I fucking came here for, all right? Um, what if it's something that's massively desired and we have to go through all this shit to, to just experience it? What, what happens then, all right? Do you appreciate it? Do you appreciate the feeling of isolation disconnected if you're like an Octurian that's in a collective all the time, you know? Um, like I sort of said in some of the other images, if I show you one, you look at that. This is one I, wrote, I related to in part three, I think, related to um, where Dol Dolores Cannon was saying that there's no bad in the universe and stuff, but... Um, what if oops, what if your default mode is a very high level being with absolute awareness and um, you come down here as a, a soul to have the experience of unawareness all right and be bad and be good and all that sort of stuff and um, yeah it's to me it's all about on a grander scale the soul experience all right so so yeah it's um if you can step back from being really entangled with stuff and it's very easy to really entangle at the moment and that's why I created a f few weeks ago enjoy the ride video where um, one very philosophical layer of going on I see the dark as um, being the rocker under the the unawake but so to speak to get them going and and um but yeah it's it's interesting times and stuff like that and this video what i'm trying what i wish to impart on you is something that i've got in a default mode in my pattern recognition skills so this is related to contemplating the incarnation more from a pattern recognition experience sort of level or perception level because i feel there's there is a gap in the majority out there of what's really going on and this might be a really complicated thing to try and explain so I'm going to try and impart many many things here and stuff and I'll I might do a part six which is related specifically how the galactic special forces stuff fit in because if I show you the other image this is the main one I showed in part four all right and so the metaphor is at some point we realize trying to go back was creating what Andrew called the hairball, right? And then we realize is the only way we can try and resolve this is get clear of it at some point in the future, all right? So we all decided to go through all the ups and downs and craziness of many crap lifetimes and good lifetimes or being the bad and all that sort of stuff to get to the point now, all right? And yeah, we've come from either the universe and light and dark and, you know, gone through all that journey and stuff just to get here now, all right? And what we do now in the unawareness realm um, and like engage what our pre-incarnation intent was on the mission of um, resistance free earth or whatever all right that was a term that used to be out there a bit okay so so what i'm going to try and do in this particular video is
explain the multi-dimensional influences relative to the incarnation war and the three factors, whether it's light, dark, or the 15. And I send them a lot of love because they know I'm here and stuff, obviously. And um, everyone is, my attitude, everyone is trapped, especially the dark, right? So um, what has been played out here is just the next level of things and things are getting pretty epic all right and i'm i'm trying to make light of the craziness here because it is pretty freaking crazy what's going on right and um i sort of did this test over the weekend recent weekend of doing a barometer test reality barometer tests of sending out my revocation that i do relative to my healing modality because i've i've written and gone into that obviously um if you know the conscious strike revocation big part of that was me as well all right this is your 5 a.m wake up call to realize that okay and the certain drama around me i'm um, this is getting beyond that the drama is a variable all right and i won't go into it too much um i'll just say captain marvel is ready to go with carly action if i'm being fucked with more all right so yeah i'm a i'm a trap being all right i'm bait okay so if people want to do misguided stuff around me it's like oh now i i can work with you and clear you and uh, eject you from the universe or recycle you which i've i've got a lot of experience of doing okay and i've helped other people to do that with what i've done and clearing them and stuff like that and um i also want to shout out to the friend that i mentioned that i did a healing with three or four weeks ago that um, cleared the ancestral karma DNA lineage line of being a seventh generation convict to Australia where all the fucking negative dream time was pulled out, all right? Like a big kaplunk, all right? And it's fascinating that the New South Wales Premier got done for sort of corruption, all right? So, um, yeah, that happened not long after. So, um, my metaphor is that the darkness takes a lot of energy to impose the darkness and right now it feels like peak falsehood all right peak falsehood is in the energy required to maintain falsehood okay um is at its peak all right and we're going to go downhill of falsehood and stuff and um one of my favorite quotes is this quote that I've, I think it's on my website or whatever, but it's by this guy called Thomas Cooper and I, I actually haven't researched him too much, but the quote is, fraud and falsehood dread investigation, truth invites it, all right? So this is where, uh, like truth to me is very, very efficient to live in, all right? Um, when you lie and you're false, all right? If you're sensitive like me, um, throat chakras can be an issue, right? People's chakras can get blocked. And um, a lot of women, they tend to suppress their um, truths because they're emotionally and empathically um, tuned into the consequence of truth. And it can be very sharp for people and it can have a lot of blowback. So they, they, a lot of women can actually suppress their truth because they're very, very perceptive. So... Um, yeah, they can have throat chakra, like thyroid issues and stuff, right? So, um, I know this from my mum, and I love my mum, um, but she has so little self-worth, she doesn't believe in speaking her truth, has, um, yeah, she doesn't even believe her truth is worthy enough of being said, so that's extended to my brother and I, and, um, um, because we've grown up in poverty and stuff like that, the worth is very low as well. So um, having no worth and no value of truth, all right, um, a lot of the real hardships that I went through, my mum has hidden from the family, such as uh, sleeping on park benches like in an abusive relationship in a foreign city, all right? She didn't want to trouble the family and stuff. And then when I came back in my bankruptcy, she hid it all right from the family and our family is very wealthy and stuff in some aspects okay 
And then when my father died, uh, 2014, in the same week, I was writing books, all right? And I gave some of my books to some neighbors who were very interesting variables to get some feedback and that. And what, what happened was that she went behind my back and told them not to read my stuff. She was suppressing me, all right? And sabotaging that, okay? And she also hid from the family that the death of our father, so my brother is, and I have not had any support and stuff, all right? Totally isolated us because uh, she doesn't want to trouble the rest of the people by our issues, but she's a total um, service to others without allowing the reciprocation of service. And it, I'm a problem solver, all right? I'm a problem solver. And um, uh, the variable that I couldn't compute in that was I assumed my mum was honest and all this shit was going on. It took me 15 years to reverse engineer. And I was an IT, high-level IT engineer that solved problems and stuff. It took me 15 years to actually get to the acceptance of, holy shit, that's what the variable is. Because I couldn't, I couldn't actually integrate it as a variable that my only parent was a compulsive liar and all this sort of stuff, right? And then it track back and I realized all the pattern of my life and it was hugely relieving and healing but it was also you you hope to be able to trust that sort of variable and then you know influences and stuff like that then it makes sense right so when I say the servant of truth it's because I've suffered from my only parent lying like that so I never fucking lie all right I always speak the truth and I would actually sacrifice my truth to protect others, right? And so when I speak my truth about things that are happening, big things, you know, that have influenced and prevented, say, missions and stuff, um, you better tune into that. If you think I'm wrong and stuff, I'm here, I'm being open, I'm being transparent, and I'm putting myself on the line to, to impart stuff that has taken me, you know, 10 years to... to get wrap my head around so I can share it in an hour and stuff okay so you discern me on that all right if you think I would come in front of the camera knowing all the effect on the body and the other thing with truth all right this is a big thing like unless you've done like the Vatican work and stuff like that all right where you're um, I'll show you the image an image quick this is the image I used to show all right I haven't shown for a while but it's in related to appreciate now predictability where we're in the 3d here and we're totally predictable so if you lie all right all right to me all right if i lie i'm opening up my psychic defense to being compromised authenticity and truth are very defensive right it's also very energy efficient okay so Lying, like I said, peak falsehood, all right? It takes a lot of energy to maintain falsehood. Truth is very elegant and efficient, all right? So, um, in my principles of existence, which I've sort of mentioned before, it's, I've, I've got about 54 and I've got others that I worked out when I was writing, as I said. Um, my very first principle of existence is how am I wrong in this moment, all right? So if I came on, talked a lot of shit that's false, and I hid, all right? If I claimed I knew all this stuff and I tuned into the Akashic and this is all my stuff, I would feel the compromise in my body, all right? And I'd be worried about getting freaking hit by this shit because it's just waiting, all right? You work at the level I worked at, this is ever-present, and it's all coming by family and all that sort of stuff, all right? All the freaking time, okay? So, truth, become, truth becomes a last resort, okay? You realize if you lie, like, um, you know, in, in the movie Excalibur, like, um, Merlin goes to Arthur, he lies, basically when you lie, all right, you murder some part of the world because that movie it was all related to Arthur and the land are one like we and the land are in partnership all right so when you do harm to yourself or the community you affect the earth and stuff like that so it's a it's a metaphor of grid work okay 
So that's a pretty long intro and stuff, and it's a bit of a rant. And but it's I'm giving you data to discern me. All right, you see me as wrong. You see me as the issue. You see me as got ego, all that sort of shit. All right, you you apply anything that you need to me because I invite it. Because then once you get to the other side of it, um, then you can have that assumption relative to discernment and stuff and I mean I'm I'm here to get people to where they need to be because um, um, I see what's sort of going and what's transpiring and it's time for the um, when the going gets tough the tough get going and I'm friggin Aussie alright like it's what we do okay so what I want to do um, this is about the incarnation war and pattern recognition and it's raining a bit so I don't know if I'm going to stop alright so the intro is pretty cool and if I stop because the rain gets pretty bad then I'll pick this up another day alright because I'm, I'm at a good spot that I can um, get into what I'm going to get into alright but um, what I want to do here is share a clip from a Michael Desarian lecture okay because there's a section in it that I'll refer to relative to this because it might be a good example all right, of what's going on or the pattern recognition and perhaps it's not related to the 15 or whatever like that okay light and dark and that but I will employ it as a tool relative to explaining that all right so this this is about this is a really cool section from a lecture called uh, age of manipulation that's about 11 hours long and I I used to eat this up I remember watching it all in one hit um, but yeah there's there's quite a bit in there and I've ex I've decided to include a little bit more because there's many many awesome teachings related to what's going on now in culture and um, you know the propaganda and stuff it's pretty epic all right like most of us are starting to really uh, sense there's a lot of manipulation going on relative to what I said the peak falsehood and stuff all right relative to things that um, yeah some stuff is pretty epic all right in particularly in the West all right there's a definitely um, destruction from inside of the culture which is very ironic which I can use as pattern later all right so I'm gonna offer that clip now and I'll see you on the other side all right enjoy Now, we talked about hive mentality, groupthink, another term for it, coined by Charles T. Tart, the psychologist uh, at the University of California, is consensus trends. And it can be briefly understood as, look, if it's not in the media, as far as we're concerned, it didn't happen. And if it did not happen, but it is in the media, it happened. A more common word for it is propaganda. And that's a systemic attempt by an interested individual or individuals to control the attitudes of groups, of individuals, through the use of suggestion, and consequently to control their actions. And that word, actually, propaganda, is from the Latin, propagare, which means the gardener's practice of, of pinning the fresh shoots of a plant into the earth in order to reproduce new plants, which will, take, uh, which will later take on a life of their own. Basically, the, the, the uh, implication there is that it's introducing something foreign or pathogenic. So that's how the parasite works. Every mosquito before it drains your blood has to secrete some of its saliva into you first. So there's this injection first, spreading the disease. It's something which is foreign to your ordinary nature. Said in other works that I did on symbolism, that if man is not progressing spiritually, in, in, all, in all senses of that word, and he's striving hard. I mean, you know, people who are on the spiritual path will always tell you they've done everything they can, they're working very hard. Well then, don't you see that it implies that there's a weight holding you down? And that you're going to need that deconstructive mindset? Because you can keep pushing against the boulder, it's not going to do anything. This is a very yin thing. This is a very Shiva, Shivite. 
If a, a hot weather balloon isn't ri uh, if a balloon isn't rising, maybe the weights are still tied to the ground. Let them go, and the balloon flies without any effort. It doesn't require any effort, you see. And that's what I think is happening in in terms of consciousness. One of the ways that they propagate this propaganda and consensus trance, and I've talked about a lot, is through the word what I've referred to as talismanic words and terms. And these are well known to politicians and preachers and people who have understood, like Professor Tolkien's character Saruman, the power of the word, the power of speech to control the mind. It's a very esoteric concept that ties into the gods Mercury and Hermes and so on. We don't have time to explore. But my God, have we not had that in recent times, you see. Certain words that are thrown up there. And the study of these particular words, the looking at their esoteric meaning, what they might imply connotatively or to their unconscious mind even, is very important. And an article by Paul Levy online called Breaking Bush's Spell, he says that George Bush is a master hypnotist who skillfully puts people under his spell. Bush mesmerizes people by using simple repetitive phrases. To quote Nazi propaganda chief Goebbels, Propaganda must therefore always be essentially simple and repetitious. Keep repeating them in this simplified form despite the objections of the intellectuals. Bush's talking points, his buzzwords, are his incantations. These magic words act as opiates to the fearful masses. To quote ex-Harvard University President James Bryant Conant, some of mankind's most terrible misdeeds have been committed under the spell of certain magic words or phrases. This is again the power of the word. And how do we make a word? We spell it. And to emphasize that point. The world judged the Iraqi regime was a dangerous aggressor. In the interests of world peace and regional security, the community of nations required Iraq to surrender its offensive arsenal its chemical and biological weapons and abandon its nuclear weapons program. Iraq agreed to comply. The world judged the Iraqi regime to be a dangerous aggressor. In the interests of world peace and regional security, the community of nations expelled Iraq from Kuwait, required Iraq to sur surrender its offensive arsenal, its chemical biological weapons, and to abandon its nuclear weapons program. Iraq agreed to comply. Iraq's, Iraq's continued, continued defiance, defiance of the community of, the of nations community presents of a challenge nations which must be addressed. Presents a challenge which must the be member for Grindler. It is inherently, it is inherently dangerous, dangerous to allow a country such as Iraq to allow a country such as Iraq to retain weapons, to retain weapons of, mass of mass destruction, destruction particularly, particularly in the light of its past aggressive behaviour. If the world community fails to disarm Iraq, we fear that Iraq, other rogue states will be encouraged to believe that they too will take be have these weapons and these most deadly of weapons that they to assist too them out have to have these most deadly of weapons and assist them out to have these most deadly of weapons and assist them out to have these most deadly of weapons and assist them out to have these most deadly of weapons and assist them out to have these most deadly of weapons and assist them out to have these most deadly of weapons and assist them out to have that, that is the, is the ultimate, ultimate nightmare, nightmare which the world Mr. Speaker, must take decisive which the world and effective must take steps to present. Decisive prevent. and effective steps to prevent. Possession of chemical, Possession biological, chemical biological, or nuclear, or nuclear weapons, weapons by terrorists, by terrorists would constitute a direct, the minimum, a undeniable, and lethal threat to the world, threat threat including to Canada Australia and its people. And its people. Yeah. The, the world, world has tried, tried other means for years, for years other means. But so far to no avail. We cannot, we cannot walk, walk away, away from, from the threat, threat that Iraq's continued, Iraq's possession, continued possession of weapons of, of, weapons mass, of mass destruction to its constitutes region, to its region and, and to, to the, the wider world. In the final analysis, Mr Speaker, the absolute conviction of the government is that now. disarming Iraq is necessary for the long-term security of the world and is therefore manifestly in the national interest of Australia. In the final analysis, disarming Iraq is necessary for the long-term security of the world to the collective interests of our historic allies and therefore manifestly, Mr. Speaker, it is in the national interest of this country. And so on and so forth. President of Canada, President of Australia, no ostensible connections and exactly the same script.
practically word for word. We have many other examples of this. No conspiracy. Nobody higher up. It's all coming from their minds and their brains. Remember John Dean's statement about how Bush's attitude in the White House when they're sitting there? Like he's just sitting there officiating over some sort of macabre play? <clears throat> How much do we know about these words? Do we know that government is actually from gubernare and mente is mental? The governance of the mind? Do we know, for instance, that the word to entertain, what it really means? For instance, that in Norwegian, actually, it means uh, to be held under, to, be, to hold, to be held down. Entertain in, in Norwegian means to be held under, just like to be amused or amazed means to be confused, to distract. Yep. We know that the religious world is full of this type of talismanic wordsmithery, you see. Take a word that's used uh, so ubiquitously, like spirit. What does the word really mean? Little more, actually, than breath. That's what it really means. But look at the loadedness of that word. Look what it's come to mean in the, in the mind of people. When we look at this word, for instance, enlightenment, I would say that almost 100% of the people here, or anyone watching this, has a very clear understanding in their mind of what this means. And they're envisioning light, like luminescence. But in fact, has anyone thought that it also could mean lightness, as in weight? Very few. And yet, perhaps if we think about the word enlightenment and think, does it really mean, is it really connected to light and luminescence? What is light? Can light not conceal as much as it reveals? And if you look at the first card of the tarot, the fool, if you look at what the Taoists were saying, could it be that enlightenment is really a sense of lightness and a, and a, and a sense of weight? But the thing is, you see, that we're, by this abnegation, by this uh, avoidance, like Patrick McGowan said, everybody votes for a dictator. Now, you might say, yes, but I don't vote for your dictator. I prefer this guy. You prefer that guy. But at the end of the day, does it really matter what the stereotype is? We come back to this idea that it's going to be a profoundly attitudinal sense of freedom. That basically is the, is the beginning of this differentiation, individuation, selfhood process. Which is why then you can understand why it's not going to happen for everybody. Because that's the criteria. You already have to have that, that, that sense of um, attitudinal independence. And one might even argue that you either have it or you don't. Maybe it cannot be instilled in someone who doesn't already have it. What we do know is that it's being uninstilled we know that it's being suppressed deeply. And the experts who know, uh, who have the evidence, they, they know this, that this is happening every day, every day. And so when we get to grips with that dynamic, there's a deeper sense of responsibility involved because might we not also be doing that to other people? William Blake said, the fist that crushes the tyrant's head becomes a tyrant in its stead. We might be pointing at that tyranny over the hill or in the other valley. But we must observe our own relationships in life. And even, most importantly, our relationship with our own selves. How do we relate to our own selves? I went into this in other talks about the self-sadism that's implicit in our attitudes about ourselves. Tying back into what Heidegger and even Hegel are talking about, the social persona. If everything that we know about ourselves, everything, is based on the approval rating of other people and also the fact that we don't get the approval we require, what a mess. And then if everyone's doing that likewise, what a mess. It's the collective mirror then that becomes the prime datum for us, not individuality at all. Except when it's the chic individuality that is presented, you know, the full version, the bogus version, by the media apparatus that have to give you now the simulacra of it in order to keep you pacified. And we'll be looking at that later on.
welcome back. I hope you got a lot from that. Um, there was a lot in it, all right? And I said I decided to expand it quite a bit to include um, a lot of concepts around it. But the main section, if you want to really take note now, is um, the section relative to the politician speaking, which uh, many of you may never have ever seen something like that before. And it's a very significant time of life. And it's interesting, someone related to that passed away recently with the, the virus, all right? And um, it was very significant in getting them that all going, right? So it's no, no accident. But yeah, what I'm wanting to do in this video is actually uh, put some effort into sort of the rain's getting pretty bad. We'll see how I can go. So. So what I'm trying to, what I want to impart with you here in this video is how to engage a pattern recognition relative to the incarnation more because it's a huge variable that uh, what I get is very few people can even can consider as a variable. There's so many moving parts and stuff like that. Um, as Captain Marvel tells me, I've got a quantum processor relative to pattern recognition and stuff, and I. Um, I learned this stuff basically in 2013, like in my, May 2013, um, I was invited to go to a meeting of the elders in my city of the Atnamatna people. The Atnamatna people are related to Wilpina Pound and Grid Point 44 and a very, very significant earth grid location and stuff. So I was invited to participate in a secret meeting of the elders because what was going on is uh, basically it was the incarnation war in act right? the people were suffering and stuff like that um, the tribe was infiltrated and a certain person in charge was doing a lot of misguided shit right? and um, it was like controlled opposition from the incarnation level right? whether the guy was walked in or what right? so I was invited into that, that meeting to um discuss things relative to that more in the 3d aspects but um and the lady that got me there was um what happened she got very polarized on me because of what happened and at the time 20 like between 2012 and 2015 i was living on ten dollars a day um walking 10 to 15 k's a day eating one and a half meals a day uh, very little resources and stuff and I was brought into this pretty th significant thing very naive for it and I admit it but even back then after only knowing sort of Andrew for two months I had a the incarnation war down pat all right so I've held it ever since as I said in the earlier videos relative to that video uh, the image I drew back in March 25th 2016 it took me a while to brew how to drew the image draw the image took me a while how to brew to draw the images and stuff like that all right and but and that's where I didn't spend too much time with the other videos to show you the ones that I've done to sort of just give you a a ballpark perhaps they're not entirely accurate and stuff but at least there's a visual representation of what's going on so you can take the pattern and contemplate it and see what gets activated in you whoever's had the made the investment to look at them and really really contemplate them deeply right? so back then uh, I was brought in and what happened with that meeting because it's a it's a pretty important aspect with me um, what happens to me when I'm around like high level and ancestors I, I drip with sweat like I'm in a sauna and I remember walking into the room and I was like whoa the energy was pretty intense and I sat down and all the an all the others were just sitting like there was more shit going on than what we were there for all right and so what I know is I got ancestral permission at a very high level to work on the land like Australia what I do I don't take it to me you need ancestral permission to do that sort of stuff and so um, later in the year I did 
three levels of ancestral karma clearance with Nikki Tatsi. I even sent my blood, all right, for her to do fire ceremony with to transmute my ancestral karma, right? So I cleared all my karma, and that's those two things are why I work on the dream time level that I do, all right? I'm putting all this out there for your discernment, all right? Because no one asks these questions and stuff, and no one's thorough enough like this, and no one goes through these things. It's like, to me, to work on the land here, especially, um, that's those sort of things are needed, all right? Um, I personally would not be doing any of that, plus all the healing I've done, all right? Extensive, extensive, extensive healing an enormous amount on myself, all right? So, energy hygiene and that mandatory sort of stuff, all right? So, uh, because I don't put my shit onto the land, if I have stuff, I step back and I deal with it, then I see what resolves as a byproduct of that, all right? So, yeah, those are the... So I had the experience firsthand of it in action, all right? It's pretty significant. And, um, yeah, it was it was really interesting. And um, more often than not, people just turn on me constantly. Like, once they've got their fill of what they wanted out of me, then there's this flipping, and it's, um, I'm used to it. This lady, she had... Um, a lot of stuff and I tried to help her for a long time and got entangled with her stuff and then um, she'd been a like a headhunter with karma right like a shaman headhunter because uh, they would consume their other shamans to take their power and there's karma related to that and she hadn't dealt with it and there's others that I've dealt with that have that sort of issue as well and that's why I knew like when Nikki came up and sort of had that on offer, get onto it straight away, who knows what the hell happened. And I remember going to, I've actually, I'm half Dutch, I went to my Dutch auntie <laughs> and I told her what I did with the ancestral karma and she, like, I have bloodline and she's related to my father's lineage and my auntie's on my father's side. And um, we backtrack of that time of what happened and the whole family went bankrupt and stuff over in Holland that don't have much connection to and there was a lot of stuff that went on around the time I did ancestral karma sort of clearance so it was very interesting and it affected things over there all right so those things are very very significant and that's where I, I say I can work with say people and clear their ancestral karma um, I see karma as a different thing I see karma all right particularly this sort of karma that's inserted in fine print and the system puts it into our DNA lineages to carry as debt, all right? Um, that debt, like a bank, is an asset in our DNA, all right? And all we need to do is call it in and the system owes us, all right? So that's the attitude. You flip it on the system, all right? You see it from a different perspective. It's like, oh, I'm bogged down by all this wealth of karma and the system's relying on me to... to um, carry it like the baggage of the system and we don't know that we we have an asset in us like something very very precious and the system is relying on us to carry it so when you flip that it's um pay up <laughs> okay so you can't escape karma if you create it all right there's consequence for your actions it's like you just can't not agree to it because it's uncomfortable it's like that's ludicrous karma is a universal law of consequence so um yeah, it's like, it doesn't matter what you say, right? You've got it. So that's why I, I talk about the Denning Brinkley and the life of you because it's like, I'll be good. <laughs> I've done I've done shit and I've had consequences. Like I said, lying and stuff. I remember, yeah, I'm not going to get into more stories. I'm going to try and keep it focused here. But, um, yeah, the big thing is about appreciating the pattern recognition with the incarnation war variable, right? So, I showed that Michael Desarian clip, right? If you can remember it, because I've been talking quite a bit. Um, where there were two politicians saying the same speech, okay? So, the majority of people might think, oh yeah, there's a guy running it from an email and stuff, and... Um, 
might have sent the speech out and gotten the people in the local regions to read it and that's the and that that's the mechanics of how it transpired and that could be the way it happened all right but how about this how about in the 3d if you're an it sort of consultant and you're reverse engineering how this speech got transpired and stuff and there was no emails or anything like that nothing um in the 3d that tracks back to the relationship of um, you know, of a connection of some sorts, right? So what can be the possibility is there's something at a higher level as an oversoul, all right, as a hydra that has its its tentacles, all right, in each of the souls that are bringing that speech back, but the information is being bled through into the soul and then percolating to the the leaders to say, all right, so there can be these people around these people that are behind the scenes that are all connected at a very high soul level, all over soul, and it's like in all avenues of government and stuff like that, all right, so, so at the moment, all right, I hope that makes sense, all right, because what you might not find is from an evidential point of view that there is some sort of connection. But there seems to be this unity go on, alright? So if I... I'll just show you an overview of, of a sort of diagram that I drew for this particular teaching, okay? I'll just show you this one first. Say I showed you this, alright? So what if a... Say it's a fifth dimensional soul and stuff, or higher... Um, has many like hundreds or thousands down here in the dark and it can percolate through from the oversoul into the consciousness of the the soul shard all right wherever they are in the world all right so this isn't probably a great example but um just imagine high level souls are very vast and they can have a lot of aspects all right and those aspects can be not defined by geographic they can also be off world and stuff and parts all over the place okay so if i show you another diagram so how, how about we focus on the usa and health and politics all right just like the metaphor of um say that speech with australia and canada all right let's talk about government and health government and health all right because it's irrelevant. It's relevant right now. So this is say, this is this is light and dark. This is the universe at a high level. This is the fifteen that are just the brats that are messing with everything. All right, and this is like the incarnation level of the humanity and stuff. All right, so. These guys have got aspects off off world and they're messing with the dark and messing with the light, all right? The dark and the light. And so they're creating drama between them up there. And the, these guys are also incarnating into Earth and stuff involved with Earth and they're all fight they're all incarnating into aspects that all have roles and stuff and that. Uh, to influence the country and humanity and stuff and this can go around the world and all that sort of stuff but what people don't get is you know this is all predict this at a high level can all be predicted through time right like we have a linear version of time we can't believe that it's not we can't believe but being able to process that the variable that there is influence and like most belief systems like Catholic and stuff, they don't believe in afterlife and all that, all right? Like past lives and all that sort of stuff. So the belief mechanics are actually, um, we've even got to overcome them to even contemplate this stuff because the system doesn't want us to even perceive all this stuff, all right? And so, say at the moment, all right? So you've seen government, all right? Whether it's Republican, Democrat, they're, um, whether they're in power or not, they seem to do the same thing, all right? To see what goes on in government, all right, for instance, you might 
have a change of election and stuff and a different party comes in, right? You go from Democrat to Republican or whatever. And you think, yeah, there's going to be change or whatever. But they just do the same shit, all right? They talk a big game, but then they do the same shit. And then what happens is these politicians pass through, you know, different areas, different people and stuff, and they keep doing the same thing, all right? The same policies, the same the same continuance of everything that goes on, all right? And to me, all right, the variable that people don't get is if you can separate the soul from the body, then you've got these hydras who are in all these different bodies and they're all stacked, you know? Could be 10 deep in the leadership aspects of each party and stuff. So if one person gets done for some sort of corruption that lowers the expectation of um, whatever, or one member does something that like creates war and um, um, that has a lot of death and stuff like that. The the linguistics Andrew would use is they become a lightning rod of karma. So say people like Stalin or whatever, or Mao, you know, these people that create a lot of death and they're incarnated into their bodies and they take leadership roles in these and then um, they have the karma go back to them as an individual on the DNA level of doing a lot of harm and the oversoul up here is protected okay does that make sense so you say from like right now with the health and uh, say like the CDC and all those sort of things right is uh, there is a coordinated sort of you see this coordination with things, say look, with Black Lives Matter and stuff, right? Where there's this unity of the disunity, right? Portraying a narrative, right? With different people and different voices all saying the same thing, which are like when many people are singing the same song, it's called a chorus, right? So the chorus, uh, not a chorus, it's unity, but the chorus is like the, um, the main aspect of a song, sorry, but... I call, like Michael Design used to call it a chorus of the the masses like you as an individual going against that chorus of many combined individuals at a higher level all right all saying the same stuff which you don't get is an incarnation war potentially and it's this hydra controlling all the little human tentacles all right in these positions of power all right doesn't matter if it's in government or banking or all that all right we looking up it's like we just see the physical body and we think everyone's separate what in actual fact is it's strategic on an incarnation level and it's like totally um, chess moves and all these people like I said the politicians can come and go revolving door right but then you see these resolving revolving doors between different aspects of civilization and stuff that have commanding roles in it to influence and stuff and you think they're corruption and stuff like that but then that's um, that's given the perception of corruption on the 3D in the DNA form, right? So the lineages are controlled because they're the puppets. Like to actually have effect here, you have to actually be in human DNA. But at a high level, they're all um, related. And so the information and the perspective to, to dominate comes through and percolates. And it comes through their linguistics, and you you can't understand why people lie and stuff because you're worried. That you think, from their perspective, it's like they're going to create karma and stuff. But karma keeps this whole thing going, all right? Doing like messed up shit, and instill it on the earth is control. It locks the grid down and stuff like that. It, you have to sort of appreciate the the variables at play that like trying to reason with these sort of beings it's not because they're they've got their role they've got their agenda okay and so i'll take this a step back to species all right so you just think about that when you see the world and these these mouthpieces on the news whether it's in media and all that sort of stuff or the health um pariahs and the people in politics and all that all this stuff is going on you have to tune into the high level all right So you have to be willing to just 
contemplate it from this sort of level, right? So what I'm going to do is step this back a bit and go into the species, all right? Even the species, okay? This is another, this is a higher level version of that diagram, all right? So what I've got here is the universe, all right? Got the 15, which aren't 15 anymore, but we'll just call them that. There's dark, all right? And then there's light, all right? So this is a metaphor of how things are on a bigger scale, okay? And then they've got Earth, and there's aspects of control and stuff like that. And this is the incarnation level of things, all right? So this is a barrier incarnation, all right? And what I'm saying here is the 15 had gone out there and, like, incarnated and messed with the light and the dark. And what, say, the 15 do with the dark, right? Because people are very polarized to the dark. And I'll say the dark are even under more control than the light, all right? Is they incarnate into the dark and then they create calm with the light, all right? So they're on the hook of doing shit. And then they're incarnating into the, the dark. And they're incarnating into the, the dark, all right? So they're puppeting the dark to take control of it, all right? So the higher level species, all right? That might be negative, okay? Um, they're actually totally infiltrated, as are the light, all right? The 15 incarnate and create drama and stuff. But this is sort of a metaphor of the incarnation war. The dark are controlling it through the archons and stuff and filtering the light trying to get through and we've gone through this and we've gotten incarnated on earth and that's where the, the stuff going in into bodies are shutting us down and potentially eliminating you know what I mean so yeah I speak about this at another higher level because this is where the Galactic Special Forces missions 1 and 4 in particular are very interesting, alright? Because what happened in the first one, alright, where Nikki ascended a species to relieve them of all their karma doing bad because they were sort of trapped, alright? A lot of these species have been infiltrated to do bad to create karma, so they're... It's like, see, I hate to use this analogy, but say a lot of, like, like, guys doing violation to women they might rape a woman and then they actually kill the woman after because they don't want to get busted for the rape so they escalate the craziness and cause more harm all right because they're worried about getting caught okay so i've got compassion for the dark and that's why i'm sort of doing this and this is where you can see it at another level and not be polarized against them because in my aspect they've done karma so they're trapped in the karma and they're um these guys they're their bitches, right? And so they're the lightning rod of karma to do, do harm and control. And this is where I... Um, and it might feel really crazy to say I've got compassion for the dark. But if we help these guys relieve their shit, alright? Then they become a pawn that's no longer in the game. So these guys are all weaker, okay? And so Galactic Special Forces Part 1 was like clearing the karma of an entire species and sending them back to the light, all right? And that's where I say in that, where Nikki was chanting, um, I perceived all the people throughout time that were going to be grateful for my work and they were, it was like, holy shit, I'm actually a variable that actually needs to be out there. Uh, and I've been very reluctant to step up and do that because I know how much responsibility it has and the consequence of, um, messing with people and all that and being ambitious and shit like that to step over people to be seen and heard and that everyone else is wanting to do that and that's what everyone constantly does and I was like I'm in the field alright I'm not a uh, you know when teachers like when people can't do they teach alright I've been in the field doing and now I'm here teaching because I realised after 8 years and almost being killed a few times like there's a huge gap in the awareness and I'm doing this as I said the very first start of Galactic's uh, uh, The Incarnation War Part 1 I had the Greg Braden clip where I included the, the mathematics of changing the world square root of 1% my attitude is what happens if you get friggin some epic beings on top of their game cleared of all their karma done all their clearing and stuff and operating at that level holding their region down alright
So they did the experiment again and again and again, and every time the results were the same. In fact, they were able to determine how many people it takes to feel peace for peace to happen in that area. And here's what they found. Very small number. They said if you can get the square root of 1% of your population to feel peace, peace will happen. What does that number look like? Well, let me show you the math. These are very small numbers. Okay, if you have a city of one million people, here's how the formula works. You take the number of people, total number of people, multiply by 1%, so 1 million times 0 0.01 gives you the number 10,000. Okay, now you take the square root of 10,000, 100 people. In a city of one million people, if there are 100 people that know the language of peace, they can begin that experience of peace. What does that mean for our planet? Let's look at our planet. Earth has a population a little over 6 billion people now, close to 6.5. If we do the same thing, 1% of 6 billion people is 60 million people. If you take the square root of 60 million people, the number is just under 8,000, 7,746 people. There are 1,000 people in this room. Seven rooms like this can change the world. And that's just the beginning. What happens if many, many people come together on the internet, on the World Wide Web? They coordinate and create that peace. Well, it has happened. It's been done. Princeton University organized the studies. And while the people are feeling peace, all that happens is peace. The problem is that people stop feeling peace and then walk away from the experiment and everything changes. Uh, the Incarnation War Part 1, I had the Greg Braden clip where I included the, the mathematics of changing the world. Square root of 1%. My attitude is what happens if you get friggin' some epic beings on top of their game, cleared of all their karma, done all their clearing and stuff, and operating at that level, holding their region down, right? We will change the whole friggin' universe. All the bleak bullshit and stuff going on, it's like, uh, my attitude is, I'm here to shift that. Okay, I own that. I'm fucking not here to mess around and I'm here to get people up to appreciating that they have the power to do it in this unawareness realm. All right? We can change the reality very simply all right? and prevent all the bad shit coming. All right? And that's where I'm, I'm appreciating all the pressure going on to draw that out of humanity. All right? And so what I'm saying here is I've... I've I'm very open to helping them to relieve all their shit because once they get pulled out, uh, there's less control, all right? But also in Galactic Special Forces Part 4, we basically recycled that spe a species that were doing a lot of negative, all right? You need to go through and listen to that thoroughly, okay? Because in other times with a girl by the name of Audrey, that there was a species trying to eject her body from the soul, uh, her soul from the body to take over body because her DNA lineage had a lot of technology including being able to portal in the whole fleet to invade Earth and that species, the individual that was doing that got galactic recycled and that, that amazing girl through my help ejected the species from the universe that were violating her All right, and the Arcturians came and gave me a lot of gifts and help for that that was September 2020 All right, and I hope you're doing well my dear holding a space out there and um, so yeah that is our power all right it comes with enormous responsibility and I don't do it lightly and 
I'm I'm offering all this because I can see the Andrew talks about the cold dead hands alright so there's only one game for uh, certain aspects and that's continuing the control and stuff and that's what I'm saying um, if you can uh, appreciate the um, the incarnation war pattern variable of all these things and expand your pattern recognition so if I show you I show you the image related to the infinite potential like the pattern recognition if you accept just the 3d like there's no incarnation more and stuff like that you're not going to be able to recognize a pattern that requires you to have a multi-dimensional perspective does that make sense things aren't going to add up you know there's just like this craziness going on when there's an incarnation war going on and the control is like very aware of that but we're not okay so that's one aspect going on. I'll show you the other pattern recognition diagram. I haven't showed this for a little while, but what happens to your pattern recognition skills if you contemplate that the incarnation war can operate like this, right? And we're totally um, like being mastered by it without even being able to contemplate it, all right? So what happens to you if you actually accept that as a variable, all right? what how can you perceive the reality and operate in it if you can see what's going on these these people and these mouthpieces on the on the media that come up that are given a lot of weight and respect to in sort of those realms that influence the narrative and stuff what if they are just shards of this sort of thing going on all right they're in significant positions in certain um organizations that have a lot of um clout all right so the whole narrative relies on them and they influence sort of things like the World Health Organization and stuff like that, right? What happens then if you can perceive that? So this is another sort of diagram, right? Where the tech and the banking and the government and the media and, you know, health and all that and all the different countries and all that you wonder how they can all do the same thing at the same time. Um, you think that they all talk to each other and have meetings, and probably they do, right? But what I'm also saying is there's a variable where the perception um, filters through, like Dolores Cannon talks about the source field, right? What if there's a hydra that's just got the awareness and I want to implement this, and it just like is like inspiration all through to its little shards, right? And they all get it, and they're all in unity, because they've all got a like a telepathic connection and stuff like that direct uplink and that to either their species or the 15 or whoever that's in domination and we're all separate and in disunity and we're all fucking each other over to sabotage us because we're greedy and all that sort of shit right and in fighting and trying to get famous and we'll use other people and all that sort of stuff and never acknowledge say people that have skills that can really help and shift things all right they'd rather make the money off their people rather than be honest and say that there's these variables out there and that's why i'm always honest about it. and you know i come from an it business perspective and recommending people and like i say my integrity and honesty is brings a lot of weight so if i'm operating and recommending people and then they um uh, then people go to them, it's like, uh, I'm vouching for you, all right? And don't do any harm to this individual because it's my credibility on the line and stuff like that. So that's where I've just gone and just learnt. Out of Galactic History 2 that I created that made a lot of money that not much came to me, and it was, um, with the access of our government, retirement access that was allowed with the money that I had I created infinite potential healing with it all right so I had the outlet and when you have abundance it, it relieves a lot of pressure on survival and you can get even more creative and invent stuff right like I have because like the travel has been restricted now so I bring people to the sacred site energy okay because I broadcast the womb chakra energy and stuff so um 
yeah, I give people time in that to um, see what happens, and I'll show you. I'll show you in another diagram. This is what it's all about. All right, trying to impose this on humanity to prevent them accessing all the gifts and being that. All right, because this is our nature, despite the unawareness realm. All right. It's got rained on <laughs> quite a bit. But this is what's going on, alright? This is what we've got, we're up against. We're up against it all, guys. We're up against it all. So it's going to take us getting past the small issues and supporting each other if we really want to get out of this because um, the intensity is going to escalate quite a bit, alright? And so I hope you appreciate a different variable relative to the pattern recognition skills required to understand the incarnation war at hand with all these players stacked against us and stuff all right but just realize like i said we're at peak falsehood it feels like and the energy to maintain falsehood is unsustainable and truth is very efficient truth and authenticity are from my perspective my defense because I don't want to give a crack. I will show you another image. I am very aware of what falsehood does, alright? If you're inauthentic and you lie and you're greedy and you mess with people and you sabotage their path, this is what happens and you can get influenced. And being truth and authentic and stuff, uh, it's your energy defense, alright? It's an energy efficiency because investing in falsehood will drop your energy and open you up to influence and then um, people will look to harvest off you alright and this is where the entities get into you and stuff so uh, like I said the throat the thyroid if you lie it affects the whole energy body and stuff and can compromise you so I've had to despite being fucked over and stuff constantly and used and abused and like I've said going from my only amazing mother that's done what she's done and I love her so much I give up everything to make sure she's alright just as my mates and my friends when they're in trouble I gave everything up for them continuously and it's been a byproduct of where I'm at in life but I know my integrity is bulletproof and it's all about if I did compromising things I don't think I would have been a liar for it so Hey guys, apologies for that abrupt cut off. I had to go into my um, IT geek ninja skills to rescue a part of that previous video because my phone battery ran out and um, mid-flight I sort of got abruptly ended, which um, I was managed. I was able to rescue with my IT ninja skills. So um, it was good to put that hat back on again. Um, so thanks for getting to this point. What I'm going to do is just basically round out this video a little bit. Um, I've shared a lot of concepts and they're pretty... Um, they might be quite energy demanding to expand your um, pattern recognition skills to incorporate a few more variables. And um, if you go back to part two and three of the foundational concept videos I did maybe two months ago, the last couple of months. Um, part two and three, part one was about the bigger picture of the overall and enjoy the ride because what I was sort of saying of enjoy the ride, you know, sail through it and see it from a higher level um, because what I was sort of saying, it felt like to me, you know, there was a few things at play, you okay? know, so, um, in part, I, I respect the role of the dark, of actually being the rocker under the butt of people that are asleep. And people are so asleep, they need hard lessons, so they think to, you know, like a bucket of water thrown on them while they're asleep to shock them awake and stuff. And um, I'm being very generous in saying that, right? But it's an attitude to hold and appreciate, to step back when you get polarized and just... Um, I've included that Ram Dass clip a few times about the horrible beauty of the universe where it's just, you don't see the whole thing. So 
it's sometimes you want to get involved and you might get entangled and stuff that you don't know and there could be consequences so you've got to be able to be willing to perceive all the angles you can right to maybe recognize that i don't know what the fuck's going on here and um so yeah and then you've got to really step back and just um I did the Trinity of Choice video as well, right? Because in that, I basically said there were three choices. There was uh, doing positive, doing negative, or doing nothing. Inaction is a variable, right? So um, there are a couple of videos that I suggest you go up and be thorough with, right? Uh, your investment in awareness right now will be in probably one of the greatest allies you have with what's unfolding. Uh, being very... Um, I guess my themes and stuff and my energy have shifted a bit as well because I've come to more information and appreciating what go what's going on. And um, a good metaphor might be um, if you understand the history of World War II and stuff, like Pearl Harbor was all set up on one level, but the awareness of the um, say society was there was complete unawareness when things were going on and um, I, sh I showed this sort of countries and the multi-dimensional sort of thing and most people are in the 3D and they they perceive the country level and stuff and think countries are separate when there can be a hydro playing with it and um, there's conflict right at the, even at the country level and all that to me is locking down the earth grid alright so I've Talked about South China Sea and Galactic Special Forces Part 8 and stuff. So the very simple thing is about control of Earth. And to control Earth, you need to control the population on it, right? And so there's the Incarnation War, which this whole thing is about, is sort of a non-free will violation of a society to actually incarnate in and to do something within the skin suit of the planet. So um, from my perspective, I appreciate... Um, The ignorance and naivety of humanity on appreciating the mechanics of incarnation are very, very thoroughly, um, you know, understood. And it's just an, an, a galactic metaphor of an aspect of a strategy and what. All right. So just because we're born into the unawareness realm, our memories are wiped, we have to go through the remembering, all the schools and all the knowledge is all gone and stuff like that. It doesn't mean that the game is on, all right? It's up to us to gain awareness. So um, I, I deliberately share a lot of stuff about me. And when that clip finished, I said, integrity is all and stuff. And you learn by doing um, the consequence of actions and feeling it and stuff. And you just like like that image at the, um, where Richard Allen Miller is talking about the flow. You just realize like you don't want to ricochet of causing karma and stuff and consequence and you sort of I've always just innately been able to do it and lean into situations and feel the outcome and basically some things might just make me go and freaking sleep it's like shut me down like it can be protection and like not getting on a tram or something like that or a bus when um, some haunted person might be there and it's an ambush sort of thing so you can fall, fall asleep and it's like muscle energy, like muscle testing of outcomes and sensing them all and stuff like that. And the way I do it is the, th the one that feels most energy efficient. Like I said, I'm very sensitively aware of my energy body and my energy levels because I can, I've got huge reserves because I've learned. So going back, I mentioned the, the era of when I was bankrupt between 2012 and 2015. I was living on one meal a day one and a half meals a day, $10 a day, and walking 10 to 15 kilometers a day, all right? And so the the skill I learned was emotional mastery, and I realized even just the emotions you have are an energy cost, all right? So um, I learned to budget even the emotions I was having, and so that was a very, very good learning experience of a, doing walkabouts, which they talk about, Aboriginal in, Aboriginals do walkabouts and stuff, and I found... Walking was a very 
zero energy cost of doing it in a meditative state. And one, I haven't said this before, but one of the greatest pieces of advice I could ever offer you is invest in good socks, like wool socks, all right? I was like, save money and all that shit, buy the crappiest stuff there is, but trust me, like investing in a good pair of socks, like wool socks, you can wear them a week, they don't smell and stuff. They're very good for your feet. Like in hot weather, you can wear them in the, like to keep you cool and in cool to keep you warm. But um, like our feet are like reflexology and it affects all our organs and stuff like that. So um, I reckon I w after I started buying good socks, it I needed a like fifty percent or more or less healings. All right, so it was a very very good brutal difficult challenging situation to um like i said the metaphor of galactic diamonds the coal to bring the diamond out right the pressure of the reality and stuff and realize how few can actually perceive and care about you and stuff uh, most people don't want to get involved in your problems and stuff most people are drawn to luster and success right they don't see the potential in an individual and stuff and that's where i just um, a lot of the society things I don't, I'm not governed by. I sense the potential in an individual and the divine spark, which probably a lot of you sense. And it took me a long time again to, to perceive the divine spark. But um, what people do in the 3D can be vastly different to the potential you sense. So again, you had to, for me, it was a huge thing of process to be able to appreciate both whether an individual is going to get to their potential and whether an individual is worthy of investment and stuff because I've mentored lots. They don't even know it. I put together, I put people's businesses back together, all right? They shouldn't be here and I've sacrificed a lot, all right? Now, I'm going to probably end up this video and the last thing is about um, the Aussie Anzac spirit and where that came from and stuff. And... Um, there's a real cool saying that we have in Aussies. It's she'll be right, mate. It's like, it's like everything's gonna be okay, dude. Like we'll be right. The Aussies have this she'll be right, mate, and that will it'll be the origins of where that came from and the Anzac spirit. But everything I do in the spiritual community and stuff, and where I dig deep, like um, working on say Andrew's videos, like 60, 70, 80 hours a week, you know four years like creating 280 videos and stuff and going through all the archives and writing all the emails on top and like the the um teachings relative to the video that go out with the emails and in the write-ups of all the videos and stuff to create um the potential for the brewing of maybe into one or two individuals that can do this galactic special force stuff because we were smashed destroyed whatever you think you've been through Imagine what we've been doing. We've been like the tip of the spear of doing all this stuff for 10 years. Max isn't here anymore and stuff like that. We've had no support. People fuck us over and all that constantly. And all it's done is fired up the Aussie fucking dragon, like Crocodile, Star Lord, Wolverine, Aladdin, Dundee, with freaking Aussie Anzac, um, annoying, relentless enduring freaking spirit right so yeah I'll, I'll finish off the clip of what it means to be anzac and it's something anyone can tap into all right resilience and stuff like that all right because it is very challenging times so i just want to show you a couple videos all right a couple of images just to help with the uh, next level pattern recognition skills that that you can have relative to the incarnation more and stuff and some of the things I've I've said because I've got other images that might help, right? I think I've shown this before, but this is relative to say if um like I showed the images of the incarnation more and all that at the high level and stuff and the individuals and getting through the grid and the light and the dark and stuff. So if you get through, alright? I think I showed this in part three. Uh, you might have the intent to incarnate and get through the grid and stuff, but then stuff can get inserted into you and stuff. And so the idea of that being is 
you know, soul family and stuff like that and allies and stuff. And what I'm saying, this is a spiritual war of attrition where a lot of our allies haven't made it through and stuff. And we might be this individual on our own in another location, in another sex. You know, you might be a powerful divine masculine and put into a female body in Saudi Arabia and stuff like totally suppressed female. Imagine that. All right. You're out there. <laughs> OK, trust me. So that's one sort of variable that can be at play, which you might be dealing with and you don't even know because you're meant to have a whole team around you, but they've all been just eliminated at the grid, you know, galactically wiped or recycled or blocked. And you're on your own, and but you've still got to find a way through it. Does that make sense? All right, so I'll move on. So I use, I use this in either foundational concept part one and two. So this is where you invest in change and truth and, um, you know, employing new concepts, right? So what they can be is you can be there and you can incorporate new energy, new perspectives. So this incarnation next level war of perception, right? It can be very energetically demanding, right? So there might be an actual cost, a cost of incorporating more variables in your pattern recognition skills right but what will happen is it'll take you to the next level and what you'll get is because you're seeing the reality better all right you'll be able to perceive better and everything will become a lot easier so there's an investment up front of uh, incorporating more data all right to when you shift and change your perception but you'll get more energy back from reading the reality better because it will be more easier to navigate it, right? And you keep doing it. A lot of people never get to this point. <clears throat> Most people out there, you know, it's like a lot of people in the, you know, conscious explorer community want other people to take on board their information. And what I've said in those videos is that most people don't have the energy to and stuff and... <clears throat> It takes a lot of energy to process a lot of this data, right? That's why I'm saying we're all galactic special forces. We're all dealing with what we've been born into, how un, um, undercover we've been until we have maybe a triggering and awakening. And that's where I've shared my journey relative to being in Sydney and choosing love over money, which was my, um, you know, I did that back in 2008. Do you think I would screw people over now after learning that lesson? Plus doing the Danny and Brickley thing <laughs> and then doing past life regression which was in the uh, misconception of death and therefore life existence itself video where I share that perspective because perhaps we're going to have a lot of death around us and we have to step back and appreciate there's a lot of free will choice going on and um, then I've done this incarnation war video series that explains it more and stuff but what if it might feel very draining to contemplate this information, but you're going to get a huge step up in your perceptions, right? So I invite that. So this is the... This is another diagram. This is relative to... Um, like the herd mentality in trading, right? Trading, you've got to tra change relative to the trends and stuff, and you've got to be agile and perceive stuff before it. Whereas the herd usually go the wrong direction at the wrong time, right? So there's, um, I've shared a lot of videos and perspectives in this, particularly around the Michael Design video at the start, relative to the investment done to maintain the narratives and stuff, and you, you wonder why people do what they do, but if people don't have the energy in their bodies to change, then um, it's very hard to be proactive and stuff. So that's where I'm inviting you to realise... Um, just don't follow the herd. Trust your instincts and be agile and be willing to change your perspectives and be open to all perspectives all the time. Have as many variables open as possible. Um, there's a concept I'll probably say about like, um, you know, investing a lot into something and, you know, like say spending a lot of money in healing or perspectives of people and stuff and, um, because you invest a lot of energy in the form of money or whatever, you lack the will to step away and challenge that and stuff. But just be, including me, be very discerning at the moment. Um, be spiritually selfish. There's nothing wrong with that. It's about 
the strongest being as strong as they can. I'm all about empowering the superstars to be epic stars because as I said at earlier on about the Greg Braden video with the square root of one percent being the potential what is the what is the potential of super psychics all together, all right? And my attitude is like I've said about say the metaphor of helping that lady in Australia and clearing her ancestral karma relative to the um, invasion of Australia on the dream time level to take control and impose law on the land and stuff, pulling all that back. Um, you got to think of it a bit like in Empire Strikes Back when Yoda says, judge me by size, not where. Luke didn't believe he could get the X-Wing out of the water in the swamp, whereas Yoda just went up and pulled it, and um, it's the application of your energy and the perception of the scale that you can work at, and I'm all about infinite potential, right, because, you know, like, I would have thought, who am I to step up and do this and share all this and stuff, and um, what I felt is the absence of this awareness being shared, all right? So this is the stuff I would have wanted 10 years ago to get me up to speed really quick. And a lot of these concepts I say might be foreign. They're all variables of non-experiential potential. But I encourage you to go, say, watch the empathy reality sonar where you can tune into other people's experience and integrate that data as your own to accelerate your own development. All right? I've, I've made that video in the multi-dimensional methods of 3D madness because the incarnation war is a huge multi-dimensional level of the 3D madness, does that make sense? All right. When you get the multi-dimensional perspective, the craziness underneath us, like from the 3D, makes total sense. All right. You have to just have a willingness to perceive at a different level. So if I show you one more diagram, I haven't shown you this for a while, but this is a pretty simple one. Imagine this is an upside down. Um, it's an upside down iceberg with the tip dipping into the 3D5 sense when the whole iceberg is vastly more than that. Most of the people blindly, not blindly, but um, accept 3D5 sense constraints of the reality and anything that goes beyond that is a huge challenge to their self-imposed paradigm. But um, what I'm inviting you to do is just contemplate some variables at a higher level that are at play. All right, because once you do a lot of perceptions and understandings and maybe the ignition of your like super vast p pattern recognition kick in and you don't need anyone like me or you don't need anyone out there you can um, get your own spark of um, perception going and be original and maybe you're perceiving better than me or anyone else out there um, it's it's just see all this as a muscle and you have to really empower them and um, don't fear failure, all right? Don't fear being wrong. What being wrong is, and I've said this many times, is all it is is data you misinterpreted. And when you do that misinterpretation, you get the, the opportunity to recalibrate yourself to what is, all right? So um, it can be a trial and error, and but once you empower it, um, it it only gains strength, you know, like going to the gym and doing weights, all right? So this is probably ending. I want to round this out now. Um, this might be a really big, challenging perspective and teaching to take on board. Um, perhaps it's just confirmation of what you already knew, and I'm just comp like I'm empowering that uh, organic appreciation of something that you couldn't quite qualify a lot of you will have it all right uh, as i said you know i use the metaphor like the linguistics of galactic special forces to do the missions i've all been involved in and i'm i'm blowing the trumpet on myself for them because um what i feel is needed if you have them as references you understand what our potential is I put all my faults out there, you know what I mean, I, I'm letting you know all my mistakes and shit, and I've made so freaking many, and I've trusted so many people, and I've tried to operate with people, and being how I am and stuff, and do the best for everyone I am around, and 
I see, like I said, the divine spark of the potential in an individual and stuff, and I can overinvest in, um, you know, you hope people operate with the same levels of integrity and value of you, and you're number one, like they are to you, but, um, yeah, it's, I've been taken for granted a lot, so what I, I do is just I move on, like I value myself so much, as I've said in the past, is like one little thing I do with my finger is more the energy of that and the benefit of that is worth more money more than all the money out there to me all right so um though I operate in the 3D and the money and it's taking me a long time to really um integrate the value thing because that engages the mo the unsovereign money grid in the people that haven't done their sovereignty to it and the majority have all right you say you haven't Good luck. You know, it's a bold call. It's like, <laughs> I don't even think I'm sovereign of the money system, right? Because it's so intrinsic and a layer in the fabric and there's a lot of effort to um, think that change to something else right now is better, but it's just going lateral and it's people worried about. The interesting thing is when people get a pile of money, they become like it's like paper trading versus actual trading the the technology in the body is kicked in and people want to protect their wealth and all that sort of stuff. So perhaps a new system is going to come about and it's, um, but it's still governed by the, the money grid, right? In some ways and stuff. But yeah, there's a lot I'm not seeing. Uh, as I said, I did a, a test of a reality barometer earlier, like last weekend. And it's, I sent my own revocation out and I was just perceiving where people are at and stuff and um, I don't really feel that there's many people that are actually able to get beyond their own present life and respect their where they are in the local reality to own it and push whatever is coming back right? a lot of people are just like trying to master their own situation and stuff and there's huge uncertainty variables being inserted into us and a lot of people that have had it pretty good for a long time have never felt, particularly in the West, have never felt challenge. And, um, you know, there's been this idea of sort of challenge, but they've never really had to have their life impacted. Whereas probably a lot of you have been through a lot of traumas and stuff like that and still dealing with it. And um, so you've been through my journey where you've been smashed and violated and stuff. And um, I'm really appreciative of the people would have sought me out for infinite potential healing and um, one of the things I love is the stories of people and listening to what they've been through and the courageous um, endurance and how they just overcome horrific things and stuff. It's really, um, so many people have amazing freaking stories and it's it's a, it's very nourishing for me to hear that there are people out there that have probably gone through a lot worse than me and are the people they are now because of it and um um yeah it's it's a really it's like the metaphor of I sh I showed you I think in the last video or whatever about the um like Batman Begins where Christian Bale climbs a mountain and gets to the League of Shadows and he's freaking exhausted and it's just like they're ready to go at him at their mo at your most weakest. So you have to really see that maybe it's been a really on the soul level to get to here. Alright, if I show you that diagram. On the soul level just to get here is we're all fatigued and all that, you know what I mean? But we're being asked to dig deep and probably take on a lot of responsibility that you would like to hand off to another, but that's the difference between followers and leaders. Leaders see the gap in the in the situation, then they step up and fill it. All right. So maybe you are being asked to be a leader, an energetic consciousness leader now, when others are, and go where others, in their perception level and information, they entertain and actions where others fear to tread right now, but. Um, yeah, like I said, it's peak falsehood and the energy to main falsehood. Like, trust me, those that rely on the false, right, and the, the with the water drops are going to be shown for no clothes, right? So a lot of people want to 
maintain that false narrative, but maybe they're the false victims, and a false victim is someone doing the victimization and causing harm that that flips it and plays the victim of what they're doing to others, right? False victims, watch out for them, right? <laughs> it's a very weak, energetic place to be and a lot of influence. And um, a lot of people play the victim to hook you in and stuff and it's just like, dilly guff. <laughs> Does it look like I give a fuck, dilly guff? <laughs> Kevin Bloody Wilson, Dilly Guff, go look it up, it's so funny, alright, but yeah, what I'm going to do is just round this out, it's probably gone too long already, and I've waffled on, people love my linguistics, my Aussie colloquialisms, waffle on, no, it's not about freaking breakfast, whatever it is, and making them go infinite, <laughs> if that makes sense, but I'm going to, I'm going to round this out with this really cool section from a round table that I've listened to and I found and uh, it's about the Anzac spirit and the Aussie resilience and stuff and um, we all have it in us and um, like I said the f peak falsehood it's just an endurance game at the moment so hold your awareness hold your integrity um, love yourself identify your name Crocodile, Star Lord, Wolverine, Aladdin, Dundee. Own your energy and your body, own your power, um, and your perception authority if you're into this stuff and see what happens. All right? Really have the courage to integrate these concepts. Maybe even try and improve the diagrams. You know what I mean? I've just offered a perspective. Maybe they're wrong. And that's cool. It's just to get the ball rolling and just have a visualized, re visualized representation of what is going on. But maybe those images trigger you and stuff. So thank you. Thank you for finding me. Thank you for enduring part five. This is a pretty big one. Next level perception. Next level pattern recognition. And um, yeah, there might be another video about how the Galactic Special Forces and how that all came about. And we'll see what happens, guys. We'll see what inspiration comes up. Um, but thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all enduring on the soul, everything you've had to endure. And in this lifetime, you may not think you're up to it. You may feel you're beaten up and stuff. But um, just remember, everything out there wasn't strong enough to come through and do this. They weren't up to it. You were. All right? So we are the reality authorities. We are the best of the best. We are here. We're aware amongst the 7.8 billion or whatever, 7.3 billion. And, yeah, we've had the courage to challenge everything we know in the reality and all the information stuff to still be here aware and holding the space because maybe it's up to us to change everything. I am fucking owning that, right? So I hope you do too. So lots of love. See you next time. Andre Hodge out. Peace, guys. It's never, you know, it's never too late to start. I started growing up when I was 50. I was a bad, bad boy before that, um, doing everything that I shouldn't do. And But my wife has guided me and it turned me into a proper man. And that's not about being strong as in fisticuffs. It's about having a backbone and being able to stand up for your wife and family, protecting your wife and family, uh, and just being a man. And I tell you what, forget about being a supermodel. A supermodel, from a woman's point of view, is a man with a backbone and a moral compass. Exactly, exactly. Rick, you've been in you've been in battle, haven't you? Uh, I've been in some interesting places. Yeah. Okay. So, can you, you can you describe to us what the ANZAC spirit looks like? Oh, it's very straightforward. The the, the Australian spirit, going back a, a, a hundred years. There was a, um, a digger in Gallipoli, and uh, they were going over the top, and um, one of the diggers said to the platoon commander or company commander, uh, let me go instead, because his mate was going, and he said, he's got a, a wife and kid, let me go instead. And so the officer looked at the, uh, 
the young digger said, okay, mate, you go and you go back. You with the wife and kid, you stay back and whatever. The young digger that said, let me go instead, uh, was killed in the charge. Fast forward now to World War II, to Brook. And, uh, and people won't know the origin of she'll be right, but that's, that was a common expression back then, but it, did, it didn't mean then what it means today. And this was recounted to me by the son of a, uh, of a Brit who fought with the Australians at Tobruk. And the laconic, <laughs> the laconic Australians who were sitting under this German hammering barrage, they just went on and on and on. Rommel was trying to, to beat them out of their holes, and they call, he called them the rats of Tobruk as an insult, as a pejorative description. And the Australians and the Brits said, that's great, we're the rats of Tobruk, we love it. And... and um, this Brit told me that his dad was there with the Aussies and the Aussies would sit back smoking and the bombs would be coming in. And the Australians just say, I oh, shall be right, mate, meaning we can handle it. We can handle it. Not let it go, but we can handle it. And so this Anzac spirit of just taking it on, this selflessness, inbuilt selflessness, and just a toughness, a resilience. The engineering definition of tough is to absorb energy without suffering deformation, right? I love engineers. <laughs> They're so autistic. It's so clinical. And that's what they used to be. That's what Australians were. We were just tough. You could, you could hit an Australian and he'd go, yeah, okay. Is that the best you got? <laughs> Sit down and let me buy you a beer instead. Let's drink instead of fighting. It's just stupid. And that's, that was the Australia. Now, our character, they have tried to change our character. And to a degree, they have. And what, what, what Charlie said and what you've said is exactly right. But it wasn't an accident. They've been trying to persuade us, the great they, have tried to be persuade the Australian, the, 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 the people of the planet, that we're a cancer, that we, we are these loathsome, racist, misogynist bastards, that we're better off we just, just shoot ourselves. This is a result of a very subtle and pervasive messaging that has been come through the media over decades and decades and decades. And if you don't believe me, I was watching a Doris Day and Cary Grant film the other day, and in the film, he and the other character were saying, oh, the wife was giving me a problem, so, you know, what did you do? I gave her a clip under the ear. Yeah. And this is Cary Grant, the most allegedly debonair role model. And you punch that stuff out over and over and over again, and then it gets absorbed. We know that. Fred McMurray, who was the star of My Three Sons, and we're all old enough to remember My Three Sons, and he was the archetypal dad, the best dad that everyone looked up to. Well, he started in a film called uh, The Room, I think. And this was a room uh, where all the executives of this particular company would take their mistresses. And so they picked these carefully constructed role models to tell men, no, nah, we don't want to leave our wives, but we want a bit of fun on the side. And it's called social proof. For generations, we've been given permission by the, uh, the manufactured ideas coming out of Hollywood of what it is to be a man or a woman or a child. And then we have the rebellious children in the 60s and the rest of it. And I can remember that. And... Um, and so they've thrown all this effort at trying to degrade what is a man, what is a woman, what is a family. And there's, a, there's a, a longer, deeper reason behind that. But just what we're trying to fight here, we are actually very decent people, given a decent upbringing. And with all of this effort, we still haven't. With this massive effort, the billions of dollars thrown us for advertising and entertainment, and six corporations own all the news and entertainment on the planet, we are still decent people doing a decent thing. We might be a little bit more timorous than I would like, because, you know, I like being on the front foot, but we're still decent people. Did you know that men commit suicide more than they beat their wives? Because as in an evolutionary sense, a man that his instinct is to beat his wife, the, the species wouldn't survive. That's why in Australia we're losing a couple a week because fathers are being denied access to their kids. And I've been married three times. And I know what it's like to have your child taken from you by the state and say, you can't see your child. My God, fury. Fury like you have no fucking idea. Mm -hmm. And I sat on it and I, you don't, you, most men don't turn it on their wives mm -hmm. because we are not intrinsically misogynist. We are not intrinsically uh, beaters of women. We are intrinsically protectors of women. But they have persuaded us that we are bastards and we are not. Forgive me for, for just shifting in a high gear and going at 12,000 RPM on my 1100 Kawasaki. They would be dead. But they're not. And you know why? Because we're decent. And that's why I've been telling everybody we will win this through nonviolent, non cooperation. Whilst my instinct, my trained instinct is to squeeze a trigger. I'm not a fucking policeman. I'm a soldier. We don't negotiate. We finish arguments. 
But I can tell you this, they have been trying to persuade us for generations that we are bad people and we are not. We are thoroughly decent, thoroughly decent, and they hate it. They hate us for it because we're men of faith, we're men of family, we're men of country. And they've been trying to crack that, and they can't and they never will. They will lose, and that's why I'm optimistic. I am so optimistic about the future. They've been trying to provoke this in, in, the, in, in the gatherings and trying to provoke riots like they've done all over the States. They're trying to provoke it and they, they can't handle the fact that good people don't fight with guns and what have you. They fight with truth. And, they, and that hurts them. That hurts them when they were, when they be, all you just do is point out the truth. So everything I've done, like the Galactic Special Forces, all that, it's in the algorithm of my Akashic record and my frequency and my DNA and all that sort of stuff. So it's there. So um, it's like I'm a, a codex of codes and stuff. So whatever code the individual needs, they get sort of thing. Whatever's the right time of their journey and stuff in their consciousness, Tetris. Um, and this information, <laughs> it's funny, it's... um. From my perspective, I'm giving you the answers at the end of the, the like, say, math book and stuff. And I don't know if schools use books anymore, but they used to give us textbooks with the answers in the end, and you weren't meant to cheat. But because I'm giving you the answers on many things, it, it probably won't make sense because you don't have the context. Because to understand the context, you do have to go through that consciousness Tetris. And I might, I might be overlaying an image of a competition of con of Tetris, so you get like. Unless you get the right blocks for the lower levels, you're not going to comprehend this sort of stuff. And that's all cool. Trust me. The discovery process is awesome here. All right? It's one of the gifts we have in this unawareness realm. And that. So I love that journey of discovery. It's such a, a gift to get new realizations and you get that level clear. And then you're, you see things from a totally different perspective. And I love that shift that you get, especially when you're wrong. All right? John Lilly once put it this way, there are no limits at all to the human mind whatsoever, except those we impose on ourselves because of our beliefs. And those limits are also beliefs to be transcended. And that's a view that suggests that the possibilities of human transformation are virtually infinite that we have no way of knowing the outer horizon of what it means to be human. And really, to understand all this, everything, you have to go very, very deep in, into uh, a study of uh, history, consciousness, neurophysiology, everything. You have, to be, you have to be the supreme eclectic type of uh, leaning, and you really have to be wanting to know who you are and, and what everything's about. And the thing that you'll find when you go to sacred sites, if you're very humble about it, is that you are on a personal journey, and the sacred site will respond to you in a way that is appropriate only to you. The information is always what you are searching for, and it's the intent you give uh, that energy that defines whether it is used for right action or not. 
And it is inside these sacred spaces that you will be reminded that you are a god, and that you are a bright star. So what you're trying to do is move through the course without ricocheting off walls or creating karma. You're trying to slide through things smoothly. How do you do that? It's called flowing. There is a technique that you can do that will allow you to touch some part of your inner being that has more knowledge than your conscious state does.